So let's now take a look at side tracking, a feature that I believe aren't many people using. So as we did previously, let's come up with an example business case again. So imagine you run a real estate business and send out a monthly newsletters with new listings. So with side tracking turned on inside Active Campaign, you can see if someone clicks a link in your email and then, so this is the side tracking part, and then checks out the pages on your website. So you can see what pages they're visiting and you can see the data inside your active campaign dashboard so say someone looks at a listing three times or more you could set up an automation to send them more details about that property so of course this is just one random idea the main thing is that you can tailor your email list actions based on which website pages your subscribers visit so let me show you how to get site tracking up and running with active campaign so if you want to enable site tracking with active campaign we're going to click on a website and then we're going to click on site tracking and then you can see i already have site tracking enabled so you have to put this setting on on to enable site tracking and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fill in your website domain name over here and you're going to click on add so i already added my website so creatorrack.com so in the moment you add your website url to this list you'll see this tracking code over here so here it says copy and paste the tracking code into the footer of your website so you have to copy this code so there are lots of different ways to add a code to your website so in my case i used google tag manager so to add the tracking code inside google tag manager you're going to click on you're going to click on tags and then over here you can see the tag i added so active campaign site tracking so i'm going to click on it so you can see how it works and here you can see the exact code i just copied from the active campaign website so how do you add this code inside google tag manager so i'm going to close it and i'm going to re-add it so you can see how it works so you're going to click on new over here so tags and then new I'm going to click on it. So the first thing we have to do is the tag configuration. So I'm going to click on this pencil icon over here and I'm going to choose custom HTML. And then in this field, you're going to paste in the code you copied over here. So I'm going to paste it in here. Then we have to set a trigger. So we're going to click on the pencil icon here again. And then I'm going to select all pages. And before I'm going to click on save, I'm going to name this tag. So I'm going to name this active campaign site tracking. I'm going to call it version two because I already have added one. And then you're going to click on save. So this is the one I just added. So since this was only an example and I already added one, I'm going to remove this one. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click this bin icon and I'm going to say delete. So the moment you added a tag inside Google Tag Manager, you're going to click on submit because here you can see the changes you made to your current environment, to your current workspace. So those changes aren't immediately visible on the live site so you have to submit them first you can also click preview if you want but in this case i'm going to click on submit to make sure they end up on the live website so i'm going to click on submit and i'm going to click on publish and i'm going to click on continue so now you can see a summary over here so what we've just did so i'm going to close this and now the site tracking should work so let's test the site tracking so i'm going to create a campaign and i'm going to send a newsletter to my email address to see if the site tracking works so i'm going to click on create a campaign site tracking test is what i'm going to call it. I'm going to use a standard campaign. I'm going to click on next over here at the top right corner. Then a subject line. I'm going to call it site tracking test. Create with email designer. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say start from scratch. So the idea of site tracking is that it will only work if you send people to your website from a newsletter you send because that's the only way that active campaign your email newsletter provider your email newsletter sender to connect that person that clicks on your email inside your newsletter to your website right so i'm just going to send people to the home page over here i'm going to copy the home page and i'm going to make a button over here i'm going to drop the button and then i'm going to add the url here i'm going to give this button a label go to my website it doesn't really matter it's just a test i'm going to click on the next then we have to select a list. I'm going to select the master list and I'm going to segment it because I only want to send an email to my email address. So I'm going to select contact details. Email address is my email address. And I'm going to click on done and I'm going to click on send now. I'm going to click on send now. So your campaign has been sent successfully. So this is the campaign we just sent. So the site tracking test and here's a link to our website. So this is really important, of course, that there is a link inside this newsletter that redirects you to your website because else the site tracking won't work. It needs to be from an email to your website so before i click on this button i will go to the contact in active campaign so you have a better understanding of how it works i'm going to click on active campaign over here and i'm going to 
go to contacts. So I'm going to click on lists and I'm going to click on master contact list. And then I'm going to click on that contact I just sent an email to. So as you can see, something changed for this particular contact. So one minute ago, a campaign was open. So that was this campaign. And now the recent activities should change the moment I click on this button. So at that moment, the side tracking should start. So let's click on this button and let's go back to active campaign. And now you see here site visited. So that is the site and events tracking. So as you can see, the site tracking works now. So if I go to a different page over here, so let's say if I click the active campaign review, you'll see over here, if I refresh this page, that this contact has now visited the active campaign review page. So now that you've got site tracking working, you can get creative with your automated email campaigns. So here is one random idea. So if someone checks out your contact page on your website, but doesn't book a call, you could start an automation based on that visit. And I'm going to show you how to set up an automation in active campaign that uses science tracking as the starting point for this particular idea. Okay, so to create such an automation, we're going to go to active campaign and we're going to click on automations and we're going to click on create an automation. I'm going to select start from scratch and then I'm going to select the button continue. I'm going to click on the button continue. So then the trigger for this automation will be web page is visited. I'm going to click on it. So if you want to trigger this automation for one specific web page, then you have to enter the URL of that web page. So for example, if we have this web page over here, so let's say this is our website, we have to use this URL. So this URL, we have to enter that in over here, right? So creatorrec.com slash booking page. So depending on what you're trying to do, but let's say you want to send them an email, you probably want to run this automation only once because you don't want to send that same email over and over again the moment they visit your web page. And then I'm going to click on add start. So I'm going to click on this plus icon over here and I'm going to add a wait action because I want to give them some time to book a call, right? We don't want to send them an email the moment they land on the booking page, immediately book a call with us. So we want to give them some time. So let's say, for example, three days to wait for a specific period of time. So let's say three days and I'm going to click on save. Then I'm going to click on this plus icon here again. And here I'm going to go to conditions and workflow and the if else action. So I'm going to click on it. So I don't have the Calendly integration enabled, so I cannot really select it over here. So in this example, I'm going to select has not made a purchase. But obviously in this example, you want it to be has not made an appointment yet. So I'm not sure about the exact wording, but probably if you search here on Calendly and you have that integration enabled, something will pop up. So for example, I found this Calendly page and there they have a video where they explain it a little bit. So once someone books a meeting through Calendly, there will be an event and, and tags will be added to that specific contact. But the idea is that here that you select that they did not book an appointment yet. That's the idea. So I'm going to click on save. So in the case of no, so if they did not book an appointment yet, then we want to send them an email. So I'm going to click on this plus icon over here and I'm going to go to sending options and then send an email. So in this email, we want to trigger them to book a call with us or at least ask why they did not book a call with us. So I'm going to click on save and design later because this is just an example. So you know what to do. So the yes path. So if they did book a call with us, so you could end this automation. So you could say conditions and workflow end this automation because we probably have another automation already running for the ones that did book a call with us, right? So this automation isn't relevant to those kinds of people that already booked a call with us. And in regards to this path over here, so the no path, you can obviously continue this path as long as you wish. So for example, you could add another wait period over here and then you can make another if else condition over here with another email. So obviously this is just an example, but this is one way how you can use the site tracking feature inside Active Campaign. So one quick note about site tracking and the GDPR. So obviously the way we just set it up with Google Tag Manager as the way I did it in this tutorial, the moment someone visits our webpage, we aren't asking them if they agree with us tracking them. So if you want to follow the GDPR rules, you should use some kind of consent banner. So the banner you see on this example, this is a cookie banner, and you want to add that site tracking tracking code behind one of these buttons, right? So you make sure you follow the GDPR rules. If you want me to create a video around GDPR and how to include active campaign scripts into that uh, cookie banner, please let me know down below in the comments and maybe I'll create such a video in the near future for you guys.